rock set up here, very interesting. I was looking uh, where Aaron put down here, that final rock, and mm -hmm. I thought, okay, how's it? So when you're putting down your rocks, I mean, you can think about, well, I want my rocks to be so far apart. I want a certain spread for my squad because I have a comfort level or I know, you know, how agile my ships are. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you could be thinking, I want one or two rocks out of play. Uh, or I want to be on a certain side of the board. I'm going to load up the rocks on that side of the board take my time, try to pull my opponent through, break mm -hmm. up his formation, maybe, you know, cause some stress with, it, or not, some distress with his actions, or maybe take away shots if you, if you block and get them stuck on a rock. So there's lots of different ways you can approach turn zero. Absolutely. I think, I, I don't 100% know um, what Aaron was, was going for in this setup, but I feel like he wants to force Fen in, uh, or the Ghost into a specific lane because the real power in his list is, and many four ship rebel lists is its joust power. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what he's trying to set up. He's got flight assist, he's got a barrel roll, he's got a lot of options. And um, Aaron is one of those guys, he's, he always has a plan, that's so why we call him the Papa Palps. And yeah. his opening engagement is going to be huge in this. If he, he actually just came off beating a Ghost Fen the round before this. So, oh, yeah. I mean, you know. Congratulations! Oh, okay. You get to fly all. You get to fly against. They get on stream. So we're we're not making it easy on them here, but no, we no. wanted to show a, a premier game, and I think this is going to be good. It's going to be interesting to see if he goes after that ghost first to take it down. Some people say take the ghost down first. Other people are saying take down the sheath of peed first. Uh, the community seems evenly divided over we that. We are, and we are even ourselves in our own beta testing against yeah. it. We are kind of divided against it too. I mean, you always want to kill Fen if you have the chance, yeah. unless you can throw five to ten damage into the ghost on the first joust. Which Absolutely. you know, with, Lor with him having Lorik and um, Jess. And, and a harpoon missile, if he can mm -hmm. get a range one engagement, mm -hmm. I think I'm tempted to just throw oh, I, a I hear fistful you. of dice into that ghost. If you can get ahead of the damage curve before you start losing ships, well, yeah, that's a viable yeah. option as well. And I think in his previous game, Aaron actually managed to put almost, eight, he was into hull on that opening engagement. With really? Opponent's ghost. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. That, that's, that's some good luck. Now also, let's just take a look at Aaron's list here and look at primaries, 10 mm -hmm. primary dice. Mm -hmm. Let's take worst case scenario. I don't want 10. I don't want 10 naked primary dice coming yeah. at me in one turn, forget yeah. it. But that's the joy of fly flying a four-ship list. But uh, but uh, if you want some meat there, we've got uh, Aaron P's list. Why don't you give us a rundown? It sounds like you're quite familiar with his style. Uh, yeah, I've unfortunately, well, not for actually fortunately, because Aaron is the reason why I'm even a half-decent player. Oh, I yeah? got into yeah. this game, and he's incredibly welcoming and open-minded, open and he's very, very, he's a natural teacher. Having He is a teacher, and he's phenomenal at it. He's Excellent. He's always helping you talk through how you play, how did you do a better engagement, how can you maximize your post. As he curb stomps you, he teaches you, which is really great. Yep. Um, yep. And I think that's what helped make me decent enough at Aces, is out fly against guys like this. Oh, yeah. Yep. I have, unfortunately, flown against this list once before. It's it's pretty nasty and I can tell you all right now it's that top ship right there that stress bug if you're not careful that's gonna win that could directly win him this game well yeah with Hera on there he's still gonna be able to keep up those red maneuvers absolutely. keep his double evades if you will from Ezra's natural ability and snapshot absolutely don't underestimate so, that snapshot and unfortunately I didn't there was one turn where I hilariously ended up with seven stress on my ventress oh my gosh yep Wow. Yeah, because if he catches you in the snapshot shot, and then he's yeah. got the range two from Lorik, and then our three A two, you get your th that's three stress right there just from his inbuilt abilities. Wow. And then you have to glitter him because you're in range one or something. It's amazing. So, and I think that's going to be really huge in in helping if he can get snapshots and, and stress onto uh, Mark's Ray. Yeah. Sorry, and Mark's um, Ben. That yep. could really help turn down a lot of his abilities as well. And look at, uh, I just want to say one more thing about Aaron's list. Look at the points economy. Mm -hmm. Ezra, 22 points. Tala Squadron, Harpoon Missile on that, yeah. okay? 17 points. Lorik, 33, just 28. Yeah. So if His Aaron most starts. ship is 33 points. Yes, yes. Which is almost half of that ghost. So as a player, right, Sumit, you know this. You get to the table, you look at, okay, what can I afford to lose? And what's my target priority when I'm playing against Mark? Right? Yeah. Uh, okay, well, Mark, if he takes out half my list, if he takes out Ezra and Lorik, but I take out the Lothal Rebel, where are we sitting? You know, and that looks very favorable in Aaron's favor. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, Mark, he's got maneuverability. Yes, he does. He does. I'm not saying Aaron doesn't, but right now he's got a bit of an edge. And uh, 
who knows where Mark's going to be in turn three. I also want to talk about Mark's uh, turn zero and the way he set up his ghost. I I'm actually really like what he did. Mm -hmm. Instead of going for like the typical ghost setup, I'm going to go joust right up the board edge. Yeah. He's, he's decided to go parallel to the, his board edge, and he's just going to drag this entire thing face first. That's he's maximizing those rocks. He's maximizing his TLT and his boost ability, right? I think this is actually a really intelligent play on his part to try to bring that through that way. Well, uh, and I believe the uh, the brackets, I'm going to double check that for you, Loop Cow, if this is a 2 and one matchup or a 3 and 0. So we'll just find out where each of these players stand right now. Yeah, also just as an aside to both the chats and anybody who is uh, taking a look at things, we generally, uh, for the first three rounds, we almost always try to favor intelligent or, a, or, a, or unique matchups. Um, and then as we get into the bubbles, we try to always feature bubble matches. We don't normally only want to focus on the top tables yeah. because yeah. top table guys or girls you're going to see tomorrow and Saturday, Sunday anyways. We want to try to get you some a, ma a ma nice balance of both interesting and good. Yeah, yeah. And of course, uh, you know, when you're looking through uh, lists, say on List Juggler, and you look at the top eight or the top 16, sometimes you find that list in there and you just say to yourself, how the heck did that get in there? Mm. You know, you wonder. So imagine being able to, not imagine, but what VTTV provides is the opportunity for you to see what these lists are. Uh, are containing, but also how they're being flown. What's the style of the player? What new ideas are out there? Absolutely. Uh, so, and Death Revived, you got it right on the point. The reason why we try to focus on bubble matches after round four is we really do want to see that make or break, that fighting for your life or fighting for your entry into the tournament. As this is the double round, um, I don't remember the term they were talking about with the cut. Uh, all four and twos from today make it, and then all four and twos from tomorrow make it. Right. So every match does count. And as we talked about last match, I mean, it's a big thing that we talk about, you know, the O2 drop thing should never be a mindset you should have because you never know when you can squeak into, um, you know, finals at a regionals by well, going four and two. Yeah. You know, on the way up here this morning, uh, my, my son and I were driving up here and we heard a podcast and they were listing the top 16 and I, I can't remember if it was Connecticut or Cleveland that just happened last weekend the same time as Michigan regionals mm -hmm. and there was a, a player that missed out so he was 17th and they were going to two decimal places on uh, overall standing wow. so uh, anyway 16th place was something like I don't know 650.5 points yeah right and yeah. this other player was uh, 649.5 and he <laughs> right <laughs> missed my point yeah. anyway just imagine that eh but so for Loop Cow and Larry Lobler uh, why only a top eight and it needs to be seven and one I'm not hundred percent up on the maths but I do know that uh, the reason why it's only a top eight is because we have a progressive cut where tomorrow on Sunday the uh, the top the, the four and twos from the last two rounds all pulled pull together with their MOV and hash it out for two matches so that's why Luke Cow is saying the seven and one is, is ideal to get in you're right if you go six and two very high probability you're not going to make the day because of the the math but it is still conceivably possible and as a very famous pilot said never tell me the odds that's right that's right uh, and both of these players it, it appears that with the comp of their lists so far uh, they they were going for maximizing those odds so Mark K uh, flying your Fen Lothal Rebel list uh, if you're listening to various podcasts out there this is also referred to as the Raptor Attack uh, Fen we're Rao gonna, we're going to change the name to Rebels though uh, yeah they're in the PTL heart I'm just saying though yeah, right. yeah those, those names are always the worst There's a, and it's also podcasts, nuked so. <clears throat> it's nuked not 3BQD <laughs> Okay, thank you. Anyways, there we go. <laughs> oh, no worries. Uh, so we've got Fen Rao. Uh, he's at pilot skill 11, so he's using the veteran instincts to get that bump up. Hotshot co-pilot, flight assist astromech. Uh, Hotshot co-pilot being uh, one of my favorite cards that I can cram onto a ship if I can. Uh, just being able to shoot at somebody and forcing them to dump tokens, I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, and also flight assist astromech, not too shabby on Fen. Uh, you know, some people will take the stress bot still with them, but I like flight assist. You know, if you have the opportunity to uh, measure and get that free barrel roller boost, go for it. Why not? You might need it to keep up to the ghost, right? Oh, flight assist has got to be the greatest card in the yeah. last few days. I mean, I don't mean like uh, skill-wise or ability-wise. I'm just saying of what the rejuvenation oh, yes, has yes. done into the game. Yes. 
Uh, and um, well, I love it on T65s and T70s, but uh, I find that actually sometimes flight assist causes me a few headaches on the T70. And if you'll hear me out, <laughs> don't throw a pitchfork at me. Okay. Uh, it's you know because sometimes uh, when you're into that 20 minutes, the last 20 minutes of the game, you're knife fighting, so you're using those K turns, you're using those tail and rolls, and uh, you know you're flying uh, pilot skill four to pilot skill seven T70, and next thing you know, well, you did that red maneuver, mm -hmm. and somebody's still an arc. Uh-oh, what if you didn't take prime thrusters? Mm -hmm. Absolutely zero action. Mm -hmm. You're getting nothing out of it. So it can be a double-edged sword, so you have to fly very carefully. Absolutely, that's yeah. a good point to make out there. Yeah. Anytime that you're giving yourself a reposition ability, you're definitely going to make sure that you're planning the way you're going to Could be sacrificing out. something. So again, that comes down to play style. And then uh, you have the Lothal Rebel as well here. Uh, looks like a pretty uh, standard build. So uh, at 55 points, pilot skill three, sensor jammer, twin laser turret, Ezra Bridger crew, mall crew, engine upgrade and ghost and if it's one thing I love is a good mall crew. I, I'm a big fan of putting mall on anything that I can. It well, just I mean, never I'm, gets dull. I'm just a big fan <laughs> of Ray Park and Mall's character mind you. I haven't well, met him a couple that. times too before as you know. Uh, yeah, it was interesting. It's a very, it's a very. Uh, I'm gonna keep me? using the. I'm gonna keep using the word unique. Unique. It's horrible. You guys know what I oh, mean. Oh, there goes Tim. When I say the word unique, it's a very unique interaction in so much as that it's very, very synergistic to the nth degree with mm. the rebels. But I mean, that's again, it, it's the game. It is what it is, and finding ways around it is is what you see. Absolutely. Um, that's why you're seeing a ton of expertise out there right now, which I, in my defense, have been saying has been good since it dropped. No one listened yeah. to me. I knew it was amazing, but it's also interesting we're seeing that Mark's not running the R3A2, which uh, we are seeing a bit more permeating out there because of all the expertise hate. So yes. it'll be interesting to yes. see how that's going to play into this. So it's not going to match up matter in this matchup because um, Aaron's not running any expertise shots, but I wonder how it's affected him up until now. Now, <clears throat> excuse me about that. Uh, so Mark, just to round off his list, is Zeb. Uh, he's, of course, in the Phantom, uh, and uh, he's toting along Chopper and uh, the Phantom title. Uh, don't ever estimate that. Uh, a lot of times you see people who play their Ghost, uh, they got Zeb on it, and next thing you know, the Ghost is dead, they remove the model, they totally forget, drop Zeb out the back. Mm -hmm. I have seen more games than not that I've witnessed where Zeb pops out after the Ghost is dead, and it's still a one-on-one -on -one game, and your opponent's ship is down to maybe 25% health. I mean, right? that's don't count Zeb out. That's actually that's what's three attack happen. dice, and you got to never remember the fact that you do have if you four K out for the rate with the, the range one. Oh, that's still four attack dice. It's a, it yep. is a still a potent ship. Yeah, definitely. Uh, now you see over here, Aaron. Uh, he's he's definitely no stranger to formation flying, mm -hmm. uh, and he's he's not shy to break up that uh, formation, almost like water flowing around a rock in the river, and he knows exactly how to get them back in queue and step. And Mark, is he doing the K turn? Yes, he I is. certainly hope he is. There we go. So I wonder if Mark is going to be running back and forth and seeing if he can cause some chaos here for Aaron. But did Aaron read his mail? Oh, there we go. I think that's what Aaron right was there. trying to find give himself the position to, with there the flight go. assist and all the other stuff, giving himself the opportunity Look at to that. set up a straight blast right down the center arc now. Yeah. It's almost like he's flown a four ship list before. Look at he, that. He <laughs> has got, yes, he is one of. He loves himself some four ship rebels, and I Absolutely. believe, if I'm correct, Aaron has been playing since wave one. I want to say wave one. Yeah, uh, he's he's no slouch to uh, mechanics in this game, and he has been playing four ship rebel for quite a long time. Excellent, excellent. And how about yourself, Samit? When did you start uh, playing X? I got into the game wave six ish, just before the half points rule. So when I first got into the game, I, I got in for the Falcon, and it was always fun oh, to be able right. to fly Han. Oh. <laughs> and then I put Dash Crew on him because oh. I love the idea of hard winning onto a rock and still putting four dice into somebody Beautiful. and damaging and your them. attacks cannot be obstructed either. Yep. Exactly. Yep. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so that was Wave 6. So that was scum. That was the big heavy, scum heavy release, right? Exactly. That was in the uh, Auto Thrusters era. That was, uh, that was in the, um, the Robots area. Robots. Yeah, robots, it couldn't be yeah. Robots. Oh, I miss seeing right. Robots now. How funny. How times oh. have changed. Well, you occasionally see them, and believe it or not, they're, they're still a pain in the side. Don't mm. ever discount a robot list. So, yeah, so Mark's, uh, the nice thing is he's still within range too. Well, or he might be a hair out, but if he next turn wanted to do a coordinate action, he could. So, uh, so as a, so go, go oh, ahead. Oh, no, I was just saying, that's interesting with Mark's setup now. So now he's going to have to go slow with his fan if he wants to maintain that distance. However, I do like that he's given his fan so much space to run away if he needs to, to, keep, yeah. to maintain that ability. And the ghost can yeah. just... Kite one and trail heart. everybody through the. Oh, that would be interesting too. Oh, is that a is that a red for it's the goat? Oh, okay. So he can't one hard because he's stressed right now. Exactly. So, uh, look at this. Hmm. Where is Aaron going to go? So, 
What do you think of Aaron's list there? Uh, Want to do a rundown there while they uh, get yeah, it out? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, as I was saying earlier, the, the, the stress bug, Ezra Bridger, is a phenomenally balanced and, and really, really well thought out ship. The snapshot, again, is people. This is a thing that people don't see coming, but with a low PS, a lower PS ship, once you get into the mix of things, that ability to be able to fire off that range one to two, that range one shot, and trigger R three A two before your opponent has an opportunity to do an action, is quite huge. Uh, and then, of course, Hera allowing you to basically do whatever you want, whenever you want with your maneuvers, uh, which that. synergizes really well with the fact that Ezra wants to stay stressed considering his defensive capabilities. Absolutely. It's actually a remarkably difficult ship to kill because there's two evade dice and mm -hmm. Ezra's ability to mm -hmm. turn the focuses to evades on his uh, defense is, is annoying. <laughs> and if I can interject on that, imagine taking Ezra and running him, uh, setting him up in the corner and running him straight across, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. just generally speaking, to the opposite corner uh, without Hera. Keep picking red maneuvers, because if you're stressed and pick a red maneuver, remember what you have to move. What's your dictated maneuver? Two forward. Two straight, yeah. that's right. So you just move two straight, two straight. Nice thing is, is you can pull off some of those uh, witty type of uh, maneuvers with Ezra. Mm -hmm. Still have some shots or maybe even bit of, be a bit of a blocker. Your opponent may not think, hey, he's not going to do a, a stress maneuver. He's going to want to do a uh, green maneuver, clear the stress, uh, use a coordinate action to help out a squadron. Yeah. Well, no, Ezra, you can play as selfish as you want. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Ezra is really a control piece in this game. Um, and, and as we're talking about control pieces, Lorik is that is that kind of like that linchpin kind of a thing where right. uh, he's controlled with the tactician and he has he gets around other stress mechanics with the ray bank and then on top of all that that selflessness coming in mm -hmm. taking that damage away from what either his stress bug or to or more importantly barb which is the the tallest squadron pilot which is that's right Aaron's opening initial damage spike that's right um, that's right so that Lorik is quite integral and formation is everything to this list. That's the, the, the live and die aspect of it. Very much so. Aaron has set up a list Agreed. that he absolutely has to stay within oh. relativistic formation Here to we execute go. Its, its abilities to, the, to their highest degree. Indeed, uh, so and Mark clears Jess the stress. is always amazing whenever you have anything more than two ships. Well, yeah, Jess, Jess feeds off the other ships because she gets her re-rolls when mm -hmm. she was in range one of friends. Mm -hmm. uh, Ezra and Lorik are helping to support the entire squadron. So here we have, uh, going back to Mark there, he did a two straight forward with his ghost, took an evade token. Uh, he might have a few pot shots coming in on him, might get an extra evade die depending on where the Talus squadron ends up. Uh, I don't think he's afraid of that at this point in the game. Mm -hmm. Take all the long range shots you want in turn one. Oh, sorry, not turn one, but at the opening salvo. Uh, then, he still has quite a bit of flexibility. I mean, Fen Rao does a green maneuver, clears the stress, and can then... coordinate the boost or, or a focus token or yeah. whatever he'd like. Focus, whatever. You, now, what can he do here? We've got Sensor Jammer to help out with uh, changing a red die to a focus. Uh, TLT, well, TLT is on there, so he's going to get two shots during his regular uh, pilot skill three um, shooting phase step. And then, of course, because the Phantom is still docked, he's going to get two more TLT shots at the very end of the shooting phase yeah. after everybody else is gone. Absolutely. So that ghost is chucking. Uh, well, what? Twelve dice. Yeah. Absolutely. Twelve dice every shooting phase until the until Zeb um, disembarks. So just as I got the table audio, obviously what Aaron has just set up there right now, that coordinate mm -hmm. action on the Shetha Pete coming in handy right now. Aaron already has a focus and a target lock on his Hakun carrying Z95 in the opening engagement, and he might also have. He might actually potentially means he also has shot with with uh, Jess as well. There so we this go. opening engagement is going to see at least seven dice. And uh, what are we looking at for number of focus tokens on Ray? How many has she got squirreled away right I now? I see four right now. Four, okay. Well, that'll serve him well and to, until he starts knife fighting, right? And yeah, absolutely. He might already use them up. But Okay, so, so I missed that. What did Fen Rao end up doing? Did he take uh, he an action checking yet? For, he was checking for flight assist. Okay. Which he's going to do right now. Mark's saying he's going to do his flight assist for a barrel, looks like, get him out of mm -hmm. harm's way. Now that's a free action, so yep. it doesn't count against his action usage. So he still will be able to coordinate. I would imagine, given this opening, uh, Aaron is not going to try wasting any attacks on Fen. I think he's going to go right for the ghost. Yeah, I think he's going to take down that, well, try to take down that ghost. 
as well. So Lorik with reinforced to the front. Nice. Now Jess, she's also carrying the flight assist Astro Mac, and that's a nice touch on Jess. Uh, I do like the flight assist with integrated. Mm -hmm. I find that um, some players, they'll take flight assist Astro Mac and uh, primed thrusters yeah. in the tech slot. I don't think that works out so hot. No. It doesn't really. It's not. It, you don't get a lot of economy. It's good for the first half of the game maybe, yeah. and then after that, forget it. How having been on the receiving end of a three talon into a one bank boost from flight assist, <laughs> and then being able to take a focus token and having a focus range one shot from a Xena, from a X okay. that did a barrel like a talon ah. roll is crazy. Got it. I definitely think prime, uh, pattern analyzer is amazing. Oh, I love it. I love it. I like putting it in a, just for the record, everybody. I love putting it on my B seventeen, and that's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> So what do we have Okay, here? so we're opening engagement. Aaron's going to fire off his harpoon missile onto the ghost. So, and if you're, uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, we can't see the stream right now. Maybe it'll pop up in a few minutes, but uh, so we're, gonna, we're not ignoring jam, it. Aaron's most definitely... Oh, yeah, and got in ships, elected to hold on to his target lock. So Aaron just cracked open that Ziploc bag of dice. Oh, mm -hmm. and a blank out. So does that mean uh, Aaron? He uh, he uses a fresh bag of dice every game. Is that no. his? Is that his secret to success? No, Just his fresh dice every game. It's like not wearing the same pair of socks twice in, when in you're Aaron, that rich, you know. In Aaron's defense, <laughs> his secret to success is usually having the absolute swingiest dice in history. He will consistently outplay you and then oh, yeah. just get borked by his dice, much to his chagrin. So he'll be buried uh, with those dice. He's yes. not, those aren't going anywhere. Yes, yeah. Uh, he just likes to keep everything in its place. I think is what it is. So thank you to our producer. We have the YouTube stream up. So if you'd like to chime in with yeah, some commentary, we can uh, see and respond and help. Again, as always, thanks to the various viewers across both different mediums, both on Twitch and YouTube. Thanks for joining us for this awesome event. Oh, yeah. We appreciate this you being great. here, helping us out here. This is great. So, so that here was we a are. good opening salvo hmm. for Aaron. He's got four shields off that ghost already. Look at that. Actually, three because he would have the evade token. And here comes the first round TLTs. He's probably going to maul for one. I don't know if you will. Yeah. I mean, I would, but... Yeah, you absolutely maul for one. And then hope to get an Ezra off yep. of it with a focus, but no. And oh, yeah, that's what you want to see. Look at that. And then Maul will turn that into three. Okay, so he's going to spend the focus for three hits. And if he gets, he gets to remove the stress right now because of Maul. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, he must, oh, so he's shooting at Jess, so she gets a re-roll. Yes. Well, she gets one re-roll for each friend, isn't well, it? Well, he did at, do three uh, damage, so I'm not sure why he's re-rolled. There's nothing he can evade here. Yeah. He might oh, be... Oh, no, correctly, no. Aaron is correctly knowing that with selflessness... Sorry, with right. Lorik's ability, yeah. he can that pull is why it off. he re-rolled. He yeah. could still evade that damage. Yeah. And if he call. evades it, then then um, Mark wouldn't be able to pull off that stress because you and can only pull off a stress using Mars Maul's ability is if you hit. Yeah. So maybe he's trying to help keep that ghost stressed. Absolutely. Yeah. So we saw one salvo, correct? Yep. Okay. And then I think you're gonna see focus for three damage on the ghost. Well, he'll have one die. Okay. So Aaron's laying in some uh, hurt That's there, a little bit of a bump there on okay. the sheath bead. So that's going to be shields down on the wow. ghost in the opening round. No messing around. Aaron means business. I think he's happy with that result, to be honest with you. I think he's happy with that result. I think he's running, writing love letters in chalk on the side of those harpoon missiles when he sends them in. I mean, focus target lock. That's what you want with the guidance ships. That's, oh, yeah. You yeah. should expect four damage off of that. And on a one die ship, that's... And you know, if you don't get hit with that four damage, just yeah. thank your lucky stars, right? Yeah. So. so here we have end of round TLTs going on. on. Jess again. Now, I want to so. ask you, so do you think... In, in Aaron's list, do you go after Jess? Because Jess's strength comes in her having friends. Yeah. yeah. Well, right now it's kind of a rock and a hard place for uh, Mark, no pun intended, because mm -hmm. of the asteroid sitting right in front of the Tala. Yeah. That could be an obstructed shot. So really, Jess is probably his best his target best right shot, now. So he's just yeah. going for damage? Uh, it's almost six of one, half a dozen of another. Mm -hmm. Oh, got some blanks there. And rerolls on Jess, yeah. her two dice. We've got again, one dodge. Reason. And for the sports fans at home, if you're wondering why he would have rolled, the, even though he only had two dice, is because of selflessness. He might have wanted to proc it, potentially, to maintain as much health on Jess as possible. As anybody who's flown with or against J Jess in a four-ship-ish block, right. the longer she's alive, the higher your probability. Yes, absolutely. They say absolutely. pilot skill three. Come on, give me a break. Yeah. No. Pilot skill three with double re-rolls every single round. Well, yeah. They'll say, I'll just take a red squadron veteran, or I'll yep. take, uh, I'll pop up the snap. I'll take snap. Jet but Jess is worth her weight in gold, in my opinion. She is yeah. one of the best ships out of that entire pack. And you know, it's always good to see an X-Wing on the board. 
Yeah, I mean, I'd love to see C65 <laughs> that isn't uh, a PS11, but sure. Hey, I mean, uh, I'll take what we can get. And uh, for round two, At while I was it's waiting, not Poe. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And I never get tired of seeing Poe, by the no, way. He I just, mean, no, he's just the type of character that never bothers me, never gets bo- uh, never gets boring. So, okay, so we've got uh, full health Fen Rao. We've got a Lothal Rebel without shields. Uh, not hell, not half points though. Aaron still has a few more uh, hull to take off. A little bit more damage to do on that Lothal. Uh, Ezra Bridger, Lorik, Tele Squadron, all full health. Jess, though, she's only missing two shields. And yeah. I, I can tell you from my experience, uh, T70 with two shields down, not happy about it, but no. you're definitely not out of the game. Yeah, I'm sure Aaron's not in love with the fact that he took two damage in that last TLT salvo, but yeah. sometimes it's what happens. Well, um, look at what I, she took. Yeah, no, I'll say, I mean, holy cow, look, I mean, look what she took. <laughs> that's absolutely true, so... So uh, we have Death Revive 1991 saying, cough, stupid Sabine's tie, cough. <laughs> yeah, and we missed the early interaction. They're talking about the Rebel TIE Fighter. Yeah. Maybe they're talking about ships that we don't like. I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, I got to tell you that... Or uh, thematically accurate ships? I don't know. Hey, at uh, Toronto Regionals, I took Zeb, and I took Zeb in the uh, captured TIE. Nice. And I put Sabine as crew. Nice. I only lost it once out of six games. <laughs> it's amazing. What, what was the rest of your How resilient it was. It was just move, take a dodge, or take an evade really quick. And uh, he would get hit. Uh, and it's like, oh, you did a crit? Well, I'll just, you know, take those away first. And awesome. I, I know it sounds silly. It was just one of those days where I took something that shouldn't have survived, and it did five out of six times. So so this is where we're in a bit of an interesting situation. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm wondering if Aaron is going to try to do a two bank with his Z95 lead and then use the one bank on the T70 and flight assist to barrel roll it back in so that he's kind of looking at that rock right there. Because he definitely wants to keep the pressure up on the ghost. Yeah. But he also probably doesn't want to fly in the rocks or lose actions on his ships. Um, so I don't know. I'm That's interesting. So we've got a talent. No, his lowest pilot skill is three. Mark has initiative. So just imagine if Mark does a two hard with the ghost and boosts up and just clogs up that whole lane directly in front of... Jess and the gang. I like that. And I mean, then, you know, call. the Tala, maybe uh, the Tala tries to fly over the rock, but gets blocked, left on, parked on the rock. That could, you know, sure there'd be the sheath of feed, so you would have Ezra and you'd have Lorik shooting into you, but that could be naked dice. The whole thing could end up as a big clog, and I really like that idea. Now, so. for me, I'm a little bit fearful, though, because I, if I was Mark, it's as brilliant as that employee as that is. Well, I know you're, it was brilliant. You're far but. away from your shit to be at that point, and, and the, not the crux or linchpin to this list, but one of its many, many unique and interesting strengths is the fact that that PS11 coordinate is, is kind of making your PS irrelevant with the engine upgrade. You can, yeah. you can choose until the end of the activation to see when you want to use it sort of thing, so but then again, if he does the hard two and the shift speed as well, he could still be right. in range one to two and coordinate, and he could also use um, well, Fen's yeah. ability to shut down some mods on an attack die. It's like just Astromech two could help yeah, out. Now, absolutely. mind you, Mark, I mean, odds are Mark's going to go flying straight forward, take, Five forward, four take forward. a boost, yeah, take a boost, uh, because Aaron knows he's got mm-hmm. to somehow keep up that pressure on the ghost, as you said. Get the damage in there, even a, even you know five dice at long range. I'd have that rather than nothing. Uh, but then Mark is still going to get twelve TLT dice this turn. Yes. You know, unless something really funky happens, and and uh, Fen Rao will be nice and close. You know, yeah. Fen Rao is running around with flight assist Astromech and a Hotshot co-pilot, oh, so he could. Oh, so he is doing the two. He's, he's so he is doing. Absolutely. So he could do that that one boost, and then um, Fen Rao does the two hard to starboard does flight assist astromech boost to bring his arc around and we could have a little slug fest going on here absolutely that slug slug or sheathapeed bug i don't know but anyway <laughs> i don't know the only problem is is that ezra being in the back there won't be able to proc any of he will be able to proc r3a2 which will help shut down boosting to an extent gosh i really hope mark boosts here i don't know if it's the right thing but if uh aaron is doing a one forward with jess she bumped he is gonna and that could oh, okay just look at it. that look at that here we go Oh. Yeah. Moment like this, he's going to fit. Is he? Yeah, is he? Oh, yeah. Is he? Absolutely. It's good. By A standards, he's got like 100 feet. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> nice. Yeah, Luke Cow, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, if this turns into a bump fest, he is going to eat uh, some dice from Ezra and Low Rick. So it looks like Aaron was assuming like that he was going to do the five straight or the yeah. four straight with the ghost, which is why he was putting all of his arcs that way. 
Well, do you know if uh, Aaron and Mark have a history of playing each other? Because, I mean, the safe move would have been for Mark to boost down the side, uh, zip you know down what? the side. But Mark's been busy with life. We yeah. haven't seen him as much as we usually do. Oh, uh, as, this, as you were saying, that wonderful Look block at that. on the that, He's parked right on there and Ooh, took a damage. And now, mind you, sure, he's going to take some damage here from Ezra and Lorik, but, uh, and that's if those guys move just a little bit and kept their distance. Hopefully, if, you know, Mark's probably hoping that they get absolutely no actions, mm -hmm. but they are still going to be eating five primary from the ghost. Yes. Yes. So, and that's nothing to sneeze at. What do we got? Do we have a two? Yeah. Wow. There we go. I think he might fit. He does. Yeah. There we go. So Mark has an opportunity here to wipe Ezra off the board. He yes, really he could does. do it. Oh, interesting. Knowing so um, Aaron knew that he was his maneuvers were probably going to end up bumping. Yeah. So that's why he decided to move Ezra first and get that coordinated on low rip, which is very, very smart choice. An absolute joy playing multiple ships with the same pilot skill yes. when you find that out that you're going to be in hot water it's amazing the blocks you can pull off to help yourself and you've point the you've got it right on the head there that's exactly what one of the strengths in a uh, multiple yeah. ships in the same pilot skill uh, is one of my favorite lists is uh, my three ship rebels all with pilot skill four one big base two little guys they help each other out game after mm -hmm. game so did he uh did he have arc is yeah, he definitely has arc. Yeah, he's absolutely got Jess in his rear arc. So, so no he doesn't get the option. flight assist on that. Nope. So, so a lot of people forget that when you put flight assist on a on a ship, a rebel ship that has a forward and a rear arc, both count for checking arcs to see if enemies are in the way to block you or if you are free to make the bonus boost barrel roll. Mm -hmm. But the nice thing is he knows that uh, he's got a shot. Now that means Jess has a shot at him looking at that arc. Yeah. So and she's gonna have reroll, so it's actually a pretty decent Oh unobstructed too, eh? Which is why Excuse me. Jess doesn't really matter too much about Now she's got she she has reroll mods, but that's it. So you never know. Fenral could because he's got hotshot co pilot, no no uh, tokens to take away there, yeah. but so but that's he the key. Be, oh, here he goes. He's going think, after the uh, Zed? I think he's measuring oh. all legal targets first. He wants to check his options, which yeah. he has the right to do as he activates the ship. You can check. Yeah. If you're, again, if you're that's figuring right. out tournament etiquette or those kinds of things, when you activate your ship, you are allowed to measure legal yep. targets to each of your options. I, I think Mark's right. I think he should go for the uh, the Tala Squadron. There's no re-rolls, no nothing. It's, it's got no just yeah, he's got three dice. As well. Actually, it might be. Was it obstructed to the It would be unobstructed to the Tala? Yeah. To the Tala? Oh, interesting. Might have been obstructed, but... Hard to tell. It'd be two dice on three, so... Okay, no Fenral, what are you doing? He's going on the Z95. And nothing. He whiffs. Hmm. So here we see at least two rounds of no boosting now, because he's going to eat two stress from this round, because Ezra's mm. R3A2, yeah. giving the stress. Absolutely. And oh. that's what you need to see. <laughs> Sensor jammer. Sensor jammer, yep. And... So he's got Ezra and Lorik, so that's an Ezra shot. Yeah, and Mark decides to spend his evade to only take one damage. Good, good. Burn it off when you can because he might roll blanks next turn, right? Or sorry, next uh, dice roll. We should double check the range because if that's range two, that's going to be a second range. Nope, that's it's range one. Mm -hmm. So Lorik will get his five dice. They're going to proc this one to double check because if that is range two, that's going to trigger tactician, and that would be good to know. Just imagine the chaos this would have caused if that ghost had ion projectors or anti-pursuit lasers, wouldn't that? Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. to see. So that actually is being ruled as range two by okay. a smidge. Wow. So we're going to see a tactician stress. Uh, okay. and I don't know if Aaron would rather have the tactician stress or the mm. tactic. I feel like I'd want the attack in this situation. What do you think? I, th I think I'm with you. I, I tend to be aggressive like that. <laughs> well, I think the key to get, he's already pretty substantially into the ghost. This is a great time for him to pile in damage, but shine the ghost uh, boost down for two turns is, is handy. Yeah, it's, he did, and uh, Mark isn't, uh, Mark doesn't have AP5 in the list to be able to remove stress tokens efficiently. I would be surprised if Aaron doesn't spend focus here. I think I would. Yeah. Well, take take the full you, shot, right? You're in an opportunity to put a substantial amount of damage into a ghost. Absolutely. And Lowerick is still, you know, he's still got his um, his reinforced token, right? So why not? Yep. Why not? He's turtled. He is half turtled up all yep. the time, unless he has no actions. So. 
So Mark's activating his ghost as he has initiative. Okay, so Mark is just trying to understand how selflessness and Maul will interact. He's just trying to understand his options. Now, uh, one thing that um, Michael he's hoping to look, sorry. Kulak pointed out, sorry if I messed up your name, but he did point out here that uh, we didn't catch on to immediately, was range 2 means that Lowrick is no, at TLT range. Absolutely, that's why yeah. I think Aaron would have much preferred the range 1. If you said that, I missed it. Excuse me. Oh, uh, no, I didn't. We got excited. I was going <laughs> to mention got, it, but then we, we got, got excited. excited with dice roll. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> dice being rolled, everybody. Absolutely. Pay attention. <laughs> So uh, Mark has decided to take the range one shot primary onto the Shithipede, which I think is a good call. Oh my gosh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, Jess is firing on a Fen Rao. Already got two hits in there. Oof. Oh my. That's what you want to see. Yeah. Oh. Oh. So what did I miss blank. there? What did I miss there? The Shithipede was entitled to take an action. Did he not take an action or forget to take an action Which with uh, Fen? Sorry, with Fen? He, he coordinated. I'd focus on to the ghost. Oh. Well, that might pay dividends now. Who knows? Or did he spend it yet? He spent it for damage. He did, yeah. Hmm. Okay, and Lorek takes it. He's going to strip one damage. Well, it's one damage, but he's got... No, did he spend the reinforce? And then no, with Maul, didn't. it's going to activate for a second attack. That's nice, eh? With that Maul ability, pull off one stress next yeah. turn. If you could do a green, pull off another stress, engine boost. Yeah. Beauty. So. It's an interesting round. Oh, it's a... Uh, uh, no, oh, it's, a, no. Sl it's a slugfest, actually. Yeah, they're nose to nose, toes to toes. Yeah, this is actually going to be a very, very interesting turn. So Mark's going to have to leverage Fen. He has to leverage Fen, right? So, And there's Tim coming over to the snack tray. First time I've seen that. There you go. Keep keep that, uh, that figure. There we go. So, Loud Ninja 456 says, So, what soothing words does Maul say as he pulls off the stress? Well, did At you ever watch he Rebels? Does the Jedi. He does. He, will have he has that smooth voice. You can call me Old Master. <laughs> you know, it's, everybody on the ghost is just like, wow. Yeah. He sounds really good. Yeah. Maul, I, get I off the loudspeaker. Says, I would imagine he says that or he just yells <laughs> Kenobi continually. Maybe he just, you know, uh, strokes Ezra's hair and reassures him everything will be all right. So, P. Tortello, we're going to double check all that for you. Which we'll, we'll, we'll run to the table and see if we can figure out what's going on. Okay. No, no, I'm just saying. I guess this is what they actually have. Okay. No, we're, we are actually on point with our damage counting, guys, but thank you for trying to keep us honest. Well, the actual important thing, Gus88, about that bump on the ghost being in a weird situation, he's going to have to go... He's going to have to do uh, a five straight now to not not proc um, the... You're welcome, P. Tortello. Actually, no, he could actually do a hard two to the left. You think that clears? Say again? After the ghost? A hard two to the left? You think that would... Uh, uh, I think... Ooh, if he could do a hard one, he, he'd clear it, but a hard two will actually put his uh, starboard side, giving that rock some love. So, so he's going to have to blast five forward to not proc R3H2 again. Uh, uh, on the, um, pretty much, yeah. On that shot. But also, Aaron doesn't want to be there. Aaron's just, I think Aaron's going to go Fen Rao hunting. Yeah. Why not? Buy yourself a little time, reset the board. The Lothal Rebel is, and I will say, running with only six health. So we do have Aaron P with half health off the Lothal mm -hmm. Rebel at 27 points. Mark was zero. Mark's still retaining initiative. I know mm -hmm. that doesn't change. And so here we go. So the ghost does not have a five straight, right? Only a five K. So four straight was the fastest Mark could go in that situation. Can't do a five K uh, though. He's so stressed. Because he, he was stressed, so he yeah. had to do the four forward here. Where's so Hera when you need her, eh? Yeah. She didn't care for Maul. She wouldn't let him hang out. <laughs> so we're going to proc the Ozatok out of there for sure because oh the nubs yeah. and yeah. this was yeah. one of those ones where you can't afford to not have this one done measured properly. So yeah. Okay, so they're just the players are just going to try to do their best to. Uh, Star Slinger seventy two. Yeah, I know you can't snapshot out the rear. That's why we're saying that uh, if he gets this block off, he will be able to trigger it. So that's why it's very important that they move all the ships. That's a good right. call. That's right. 
And it doesn't matter what stream you watch at what level of tournament play, it's it's great to see all the X-Wing players working together. Ooh, that, that might very clear. That is dangerously close. That, oh, I think that clears, yeah. yeah. Look at that. Beautiful. Look at that. Well nice. done, Mark. That's Gotta give credit where it's due, right? That's definitely what he needed. It was a good call. There we go. So it'll turn out that the that might have been an interesting setup there. Hmm. And then As Aaron just tells him that was pretty well done. <laughs> Sabine just dropped the bomb. No, no yeah. Sabine on the no Sabine on the ghost. Just kidding. <laughs> She'll just throw it there and then Zeb's like, oh good, now I get a shot. But anyway. Yeah. So we got pretty. Yeah, I think Fen Rao is going to have to uh, power up the, uh, the thrusters and get out of dodge. Yeah. Because Aaron's coming for you. Yeah, absolutely. Look at this, eh? I mean, Jess is moving in. She's got a boost. She could even... Oh, Ooh, I like ooh, that. that. Let's see if he uses... Wow, I was so wrong. I think Aaron really wants to keep the pressure on the Ghost. Yeah. He's in a pattern analyzer, can't flight assist, so he's opted to do that. Yeah. You know what I immediately thought, though, was prime thrusters, and I realized Jess didn't have them. Yeah, but, but he also would have had the Ghost in the arc anyways. Yeah, so. and getting close, I mean, he's at range two, he's at range two. Why put yourself with your nose facing a rock, right? Yeah. Look at this. Yeah, he's he's hunting for the money. Yeah. That's what this is now. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, I like I like Aaron's flight style. If you've seen a couple of his other games, he is not afraid to stress his entire squad out no. for the greater good, if but you will. You've got to press your advantage, I think, when you have that option. And yeah. I think right now he's got to do it. So he's opting to do low rig first, which I think is meaning that he's worried that he might get a bump somewhere, and he wants or to get is that Lorik turning to the left on the ghost. Yeah. Hmm. Is Lorik turning to the left? Oh no, he's oh well. That's nice because it puts Lorik in a position to chase down Fen Rao a little more, keep the pressure on him, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's great. That's great. I think he was not able to get the rear arc in there. Oh, no, it's in there, I think. Mm. That's going to be close. That is dodgy. Like, I, no. Very, very close. No, you're talking about Lower X 180? So Lower is no. definitely going to reinforce the rear because I think... But Ezra bumps here, probably, and so. keeps the rear arc. Oh, no. I he's think falling he's going to with Ezra. Over the rock? Yeah, he's okay. Oh, no, he's not. Okay. Hmm. So he's balancing, he's spreading out his arcs. He's going to keep yeah. pressure on Fen Rao, keeping him honest, yeah. while still yeah. trying to maintain some firepower towards. That's right. And Fen Rao can uh, coordinate now too, right? Yes, so absolutely. That's pretty nice. So Fen Rao with that perfect knowledge of uh, where people are. So so you're right, Patrick. Patrick, yeah, high risk, high reward. Absolutely. Again, this is one of those moments uh, where, well, pretty close to swing for the fences. See what you can do. I mean, this could be the glory round for Aaron. Well, I think one of the things when you're up against a very, very powerful list that you are, are not intimidated by, but are having a less than ideal matchup against, I think mm -hmm. sometimes you do have to do yeah. uh, high risk, high reward. Yeah, do that unexpected stuff. Right, De Devin Monkhouse there just yeah. snuck in on our six. There he is. Just we're being yeah. supervised. So yeah, okay. Loop Cow, that's exactly. That's a very good point. That's what we're talking about. Um, Aaron, Make sure the, the streamers don't cheat. That's, that's right. In his we're play not, style, has we're managed cheating on to. Stream managed to separate Fen from his ghost, which is another powerful way to help deal with yeah. the uh, uniqueness of the list. Yeah. yeah. What do we got here? Looks like uh, Aaron's so managed quiet. to force Mark to spread out all that damage over all of his ships. Yeah. Whereas uh, he's been pretty good at keeping all the damage on the, all the heat on the Lothal. That's right, and Aaron, he's been able to swap the players in and out as he sees fit. Um, and Lorik's doing a lot of work here. Great synergy still. The Tala stress token is behind, underneath its wings, I believe. Yeah, it's right, yeah. Starboard side of the Tala. Okay, so. That's quite the laser. Yeah. Look at that thing. I think I'm blind. We've got a range two from okay. Fen Rao out the rear, which is gonna. With hot, hot shot. Hot. So he's gonna strip some tokens off Jess. Which means he might actually decide to use his TLT's on just then at this point, too. Absolutely. She's only going to have the one reroll. Uh, he's not going to spend the focus? Well, I guess, no, I wouldn't spend it either. He's got two ships facing him. Yeah, Lorik might have range on his... Uh, oh, yeah, look at this, eh? You got one, two, one, two. So that's definitely a range three shot from Lorik yeah. on Fenrau. Yep. Reroll from oh, Jess. So Hotshot co-pilot stripped off her uh, her token. No, that's interesting. So the hotshot co-pilot goes. Oh, I missed the previous uh, re-roll then. I was wondering if you could theoretically re-roll your focus with Jess. 
into a blank, potentially not no. losing. Oh, you lose your hawk up so. anyway, so it makes no difference. Yeah, it's gone, it's well gone, right? Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, Lorik. Two. So that's so. one in defend. He's still alive, still breathing. Ezra's still going to have, yeah. So that'll be a two on three. Yeah, so he'll definitely use R3-H2 to put another stress onto the Fenrau. And Snapshot, by the way, just to refresh my memory, Snapshot, is it only range one? Uh, snapshot's only in range one, but range here's one, where okay. the interaction is very, very important to remember, too. R3-H2, because of initiative setup or however that works, is actually going to happen before Fenrau's ability to shut down your... So he spends your, a focus and yeah. dodges that one hit from, uh, from Ezra. There you go. Never trust the green dice. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Oh. So he's going to keep his target lock? He can't activate that because of stress. That's the power of R3-H2. Because Fen was stressed, he wasn't able to activate his ability. Oh. OK. So a couple. Yeah, Death Revived, you're correct. I was erroneous in what I was saying. It was because that Fen didn't have uh, um, Ezra in arc, which is why he wasn't able to activate. And now that R3-H2 is on it, he couldn't activate it against um, the Tala. Thanks. So just taking a look at our Twitch viewers, we've got 116 people watching this stream right now. Outstanding. Nice, Thank you all for joining us today. Also, another interesting table interaction just happened for the viewers at home as well. I just want to point that out in case you haven't seen that interaction happen. With Sensor Jammer and Target Lock, because yeah. uh, Aaron blanked out on his first attack, that was the opportunity with which to Sensor Jammer. And then at that point, he spent his Target Lock, and he's no longer rolling attack dice. He's modifying his attack dice. And Sensor Jammer no longer procs in the second attack when you spend your Target Lock. It's good to know. So if you blank out on a Sensor Jammer, yeah. it's actually okay as long as you have a Target Lock. So Mark is trying to figure out his target priorities now, asking uh, Aaron about all the life uh, he has on other ships and see where he should decide to spend his primaries or his That's penalties. That's right. Yeah, and, and with the rocks around him like that, he's got to consider, okay, who's getting the extra evade dice? Uh, yeah. How is this all going to work out? So yeah. Ezra's down to far hull, but he'll get, odds are he will get the uh, additional dodge, or sorry, evade die. Okay, so we've got... So he's focus. actually throwing dice into Jess. He's trying to get her he off is. the board. Oop. Big roll there. A little bit of a slide of a rock. What do we have? <clears throat> Excuse me. Two. So she dodged the first round. Oh, my. Now she'll get the fire back. So, yeah, I don't know if shooting at Jess uh, with the bottom of the shooting phase would have would have been my choice. But, yeah. I mean, I, I yeah, yeah, guess I, I would have been partial to, to Ezra or the Tala. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I either agree of those might have been could. fairly sexy, but... But we're not playing right now. It's a different. Nope. It's different when you're at the mat. That's for sure. Hundred percent. And afterwards, it's... you just put your hand on your forehead and you're like, "What?" <laughs> but you learn from that, right? You go on. Oof. Mark knows Mark's exactly what he's doing. The rock. So here comes end of round TLT. Yeah. So he's going to continue commit to try to shoot at Jess. Yeah. That looks a bit better. Yeah. So because uh, Jess is out of range for selflessness and Lorex ability, he definitely takes that damage. So Jess is down to shields, the hull only. Look at that. Okay. And his end of TLT is fair a little bit better than his uh, primary round during the attack. That's two damage on Jess there. And Jess you sitting see at two he, with integrated. Uh, and yeah, I'd like to point out that he did get a hit, so that means that Maul's ability allows him to pull off that stress. So I, I've, I've, I've heard a couple of people asking, well, how come he's pulling off two stress a turn, or how come he's pulling off a stress at the very end of the phase, yep. in the shooting phase? That's exactly how he's doing it. Maul allows you to do that. Now, remember, though, just going before that, if you want to use Maul to reroll a die or dice, you cannot do that if you're already stressed. So when you see the TLT used in this fashion, uh, the first three dice are rolled, maybe Maul is used on that re-roll, that's most commonly what you see. He takes the stress and just holds on to it because he knows he's going to have another TLT salvo mm -hmm. where he can ditch that stress Absolutely. at the end of the turn. And the thing the to end also of the remember phase, about the TLT is it's an attack that you make twice, not two attacks. So we have Fen Rao for Mark at uh, one hull in the Lothal, hovering at five. Zeb's healthy because he's still docked. Ezra Bridger. Uh, for Aaron at four hull, low Rick. He's lost a couple of shields, so he's down to one shield and full health. The Tala, 
one shield, two health, and Jess, she's uh, she's on the bubble at two hull. Uh, I'm not going to say that's easy. She still has her rerolls. She still has Lorik near her. Yeah. Uh, it's it's not it's not an easy one right now. So that's quick for sure. shout out to all the people in the YouTube chat right now. We want to say hey to Marcus. Thanks. For greet, greetings from Germany. Greetings to you as well. All right. Ryan, Germany. Another German there. All right. Uh, Christoph. Uh, greetings from Poland and Wow. I don't know how to pronounce your name. I very much apologize, but thank you very much for joining us from Brazil. Let's see Great. you. Look at this. Uh, yeah. Uh, Pelosis, Aaron's list is geared towards making target priority hard. Correct. That is, I think, another uh, staple of a proper four ship rebel list or any right. four ship list. That's is right. if, if you don't have a clear target to go after, you've already gotten into your opponent's head, making it very difficult for them to uh, uh, prioritize. And that's where a part of the strength on the Ghost Fen comes from, is it's able to just focus something down that's right. and just burn it down and remove it. It's a bulldozer it. of damage. Yeah. Now, don't be surprised if you see Aaron move Jess out of the conflict now. She's down to two health. I know he's not afraid to stand up and fight, but he doesn't have to keep her in the fight right now. Mm -hmm. And Aaron is very good at cycling his ships through. Okay, who's next on deck? You know, does he want to put Lorik up there, backed up by the Tala to keep the pressure on? Why not, right? Move Jess out. I've seen him do it before. He actually might do one bank left with Jess to clear her stress and then flight assist for the booster on that rock. And then he can co he won't be able to coordinate an action after, but I think that's Good. what he might do. He could. It'd be it'd be risky though to be, end up at uh, range one with uh, Fen Rao. You wouldn't want that for Jess away from her friends like that, right? So it's going to be. Uh, oh, is he just going to park her there? That's pretty good. I bet you that's out of TLT range too. Mm, that's close. Yeah. And if it's not, then he's got a rock there, I right? I think he was thinking he wouldn't be in range. Yeah, I'm not in love with that position for Jess's next turn. If she makes it through this round, I really I, I like kind of like it. At her. You, 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 I do. I kind of like it because if Fen Rao starts circling around, mm -hmm. she's sitting right there to pounce on him or to block him. Why not? She's right? going through a rock next turn, no matter what. You think? Think it too hard would hit the rock? Might. Mm. Yeah. Oh, here Angle we go. As we're getting really, uh, really sporty. Look at that. Wow. Ooh, yeah. Well, I think so. Nice. Oh, I know exactly what Aaron was going for. He was hoping <laughs> to see if there's a one bank or whatever uh, to see if he could proc his uh, hot. Oh. Uh, sorry, his um, snapshot to take Fen out of the game. There you go. Well, why not? For combat. That's wonderful setup. Yeah, you're right, Sami. That's just wow. And his reinforce is going to help keep Jess alive. This is yeah. So Look at this. Again, yeah. he's putting on a clinic on how you fly a four ship list. Yeah. His version of a four ship list. So course. he's not sacrificing anything. As everybody can see here. Aaron is not sacrificing anything. He's, again, keeping his ship cycled through. He's keeping the pressure up. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and you... also, he's he's trying to maintain optimal positions on both ships at the same time, so he still has pressure on Fen. Fen is still very de in dangerous position of not dying. Uh, Fen's in a great position right now. Sure, you know, uh, Ezra might have a shot on him, but mm -hmm. I really like what Mark did here. Uh, Mark played it conservatively, played it smart, uh, and he's still going to be able to keep Fen in the game. Mm-hmm. Oh, hola from Serbia, Vladimir. Pleasure for joining us. Thank you for joining us, everyone. All right, Serbia, Germany, Brazil. It's an amazing Great. group of people who are joining Great. us all over Europe and South America. This is incredible. Thanks, everyone. Hey, thank, you for, uh, thank you for tuning in, everybody. It's great to see you all here today. Uh, so here we are, 22 minutes left in the game. Again, uh, day one, Friday. There's going to be uh, day two. And then uh, day three is Sunday where, you know, the top eight, I think mm -hmm. you were saying, Samit, uh, top eight will uh, go at it for uh, Canadian national champion. We'll have two rounds of Swiss and then the top eight from oh, there. Making, oh, which two is rounds. Everybody okay. is saying right. the seven Excuse one, me, everybody. You making it. Right, right, got it. Uh, so what are we looking at for a hull here? I mean, uh, just... This is uh, dangerously close right now, so... Um, wow. So Aaron's firing up here, too. Yeah, so Lorik, he's firing a Lorik first, it looks like. And so we're going to have three or four dice on Fenral. Four. We've got three evades. Look at that. He makes it look so easy. <laughs> <laughs> so I think because of the hot cop, I think he figured he'd fire with the Lorik anyways first. So what do we have? Is that uh, Ezra's shot? Oh, there goes Ezra. There goes Fenral. Sorry, right? there goes Fenral. My apologies. Hmm. So as, as Aaron uh, affectionately calls his uh, Tala pilot, that's Barb. She's a graduated from a Zenit, from a uh, oh, yeah. bandit up to a, <laughs> oh. up to a, up to a Tala. It's oh, always great. fun when you name your non-named ships. Yeah. <laughs> I've run into a couple of people at tournaments who they, they actually have a, a story page written up. 
for all their pilots and whatnot. It's very so, interesting. Yeah. There's a whole history they have on them. Oh, here we go. So Mark has initiative, so he gets his shots yeah. onto Jess first. He's commenting on how he's, he's not in love with his uh, shot selection yeah. of, of having to shoot at Jess. Oh, yeah. And he doesn't like the fact that he's got to shoot through a rock, and she still has integrated and lower rig. I don't think she does this turn. Hmm. Well, he can use Ezra here, right? What's that? I thought he could turn that focus into a crit he's using Ezra. He's not stressed Ezra. currently. So oh, that's right. I'm he's, sorry. That's he's right. rolling yeah. right now with Maul, and just now he turns into it. He's so stressed all the time. So. Yeah. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Natties. Natties. Lucky so there's Irish. that uh, Lucky the Irish Lucky card. Irish. Oh, look Coming at that. Aaron there. Aaron and his Natties. That zero point EPT as we've been showing, oh, showing you all day. I was waiting for. Potatoes. I was waiting for Aaron to roll Natties twice in a row, but he only got five out of six. What a slacker, eh? Yeah. What a slacker. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh. focus for damage. Hmm. Oh, okay. And they, um, don't forget the ghost is still harpooned, right? So Aaron's also contemplating the math, yeah. So he's worried yeah. about the fact that he's got an end around TLT coming and he's got the evade token. Yeah. He doesn't want to spend a focus on Jess Whoa. for that one damage. He's playing long yeah. game again. He's been cautious in the long game. Absolutely. Well, why wouldn't you right now? Look at look at the amount of hull he's toting around. He still have four small ships. He's got 53 points. Yeah. The onus is not on Aaron right now to win this game. No, he's got no. half on the ghost and he's got, as you were saying, he's got a ton of points left over still. So, uh... Palossus, uh, what expansion does the Lucky the Irish card come in? Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure the uh, expansion is uh, attending Canadian Nationals. Yeah, right now. that's comes, the only way to get it. It comes in the plane on VTT, VTTV Live it, there on St. Patty's Day weekend. It's the VTTV expansion kit. Exactly. Uh, look for that in no stores near you. It does not come in a big base <laughs> blister, even though it's small base ship, by the way. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Samit, since you're, you're a member of the PTL, do you know if they're going to be printing that card and handing it out to PTLers or... Uh, is it going to be like the major attraction that pulls people from BC and the East Coast to fly in to I... fight for a Lucky the Irish card? I mean, how serious is this going to get? I don't want to confirm nor deny any plans that Big Boss Devin might have. All I know is I'm, co I'm going to be coming up with some spare time very soon, yeah, yeah. and I will be wanting to help them make a bunch of alt arts. We've there done. we go. Yeah, we'll be making some new stuff fun. Well, we'll get you one of those big old copiers with the, cil with the cylinder that you crank yes. by hand, and yeah. you can smell the ink, screen. and you can just... <laughs> we should do our own No, we're screen. talking, what, 1981? here. Oh. <laughs> anyway, what Hellenic there? Tabletop Whoa. Wargame Videos. Hello from Greece as well. Ah, opa. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. But, but, but I always roll five hits and two TLTs because I is Ghost Fen. Loop Cow, thank you. Theoretically, <laughs> if you do roll average, that is exactly what you will do, but it is possible to beat them. We have the technology. We can rebuild him. Yeah. Okay, so... In this situation right now, if you're a mark, you're stressed, what are you doing here? You're clearing stress, you're doing a one bank to clear stress. Well, you want to be able to take that evade token. Are you talking about Ezra? Yeah, no, with his, I'm talking about what Oh, you're talking about the ghost? Yeah, okay, because I'm looking here. down at Ezra right now thinking, oh, just do it too hard. I mean, you're oh, not going to hurt anything. With Ezra. He's, got, he's got hair on it. Oh, I guess you could, yeah. He, yeah. Oh, oh, good. I feel like he's going to want to split them up to try to cut off all running options for the ghost. It's interesting. Well, the ghost can't. Oh, he just pulled the stress off. Oh, okay, excuse me. I thought maybe if he forgot from previous turn. So he's doing the one... Two bank. One, two, two bank, yeah. So That's interesting. You know, that, that was I was on the fence about that with the, uh, with the ghost. He could have done uh, two hard to the left, or he could have done this one or two bank to the right. Um, I don't think I would have read his mail either way. So I guess I think what Mark is thinking here is he's trying to wants that action and he's putting his faith in the evade token over uh, the stress because the mall and he also couldn't maul if he stayed that stressed as well yeah. so I think that's where his, his, his and this is a I, I honestly gotta say this is a correct choice in Aaron there's absolutely no reason for him to risk just right now and um, you know if, and if I know Aaron he likes to have his formation flying he's gonna tidy up the house now and bring them around and it's gonna make Mark fight for every point. Cause I mean, he can throw he can throw barb at him, and so if he gets wrong. a damage through, so he only loses 17 points. <laughs> so here we go. We've got the Tala coming up here, and uh, it took it took a focus. Okay. So once the well, harpoon not? is out, yep. Barb's job is basically to block barb. and to die. That's basically what she does normally when Aaron's flying her, and I think that's normally how that works. I like and, that. Um, and. I, I'm guessing that's what he's thinking. Uh, the strength of that is going to come from keeping those three together. Because that block, Jess, Lorik, and yeah. Ezra, yeah. that's his That's the lift. core synergy right that's there. That's his core synergy. That's his, yeah. that's his meat and potatoes. 
Uh, Barb's a nice, a wonderful salad that you love to have. But you've got to take yeah. her seriously unless she harpoons you in the mouth. Yeah, no, which we saw right, in the first right. round. And look at the Tala right now. I mean, really, three evade dice with a focus is a really good chance he will survive all 12 TLT red think? dice. We'll see. I mean, I, I think so. I mean, good on him to give I never that underestimate rock. those little guys. Oh. Aaron with more green dice. Is Aaron, uh, his last name is Irish, is it? It's his weekend, isn't it? He's rolling an awful lot of really good dice. So he's going to spend focus I don't, damage? I don't think uh, Aaron's last name is Irish at all. No, but anyway. it's not. <laughs> it's Palpatine. Yeah, it's, yeah. The Red Cliffs oh. of Naboo. Sorry, Green Cliffs of Naboo. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, oh, oh. What's he doing here? He's going to remove the mole stress. Okay. There it is. Yeah, so she, only, okay. she only takes two damage off. As you said, she's able to I, survive it. You know, when you're looking at that type of, yeah. So, yeah, I just want to put it out there that, sure, I can say 12 dice every turn, but that is not guaranteed. That's not a guaranteed four damage. Some people will say, oh, it's a guaranteed four damage. Now, look at the context every time. Aaron knew his odds there, and he stuck with it. Rightfully Absolutely. so, yeah. So here we are, we're at uh, 14 minutes, starting at the top of the planning phase. Uh, the ghost still has an evade token. Does he, he doesn't get to keep that, does he? Patrick, Patrick, I don't I don't disagree with you. I think the hard two to the left or a three bang from Natala and a focus token is a, is is not a bad idea. I, yeah, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. if you're going in, you know you know MOV's gonna matter in, long, in later stages in the game, the more and more you go, you definitely want to keep that if possible. Uh, or he could, he could. I don't think he's going to want a hard two that right over a rock and sit on it. That would be foolish. Uh, he might. Uh, well, actually, if he does a hard two to the left, I think he could clear it. And the nice thing is, is again, he could have an extra evade die, depending on where that ghost goes. He really could. And uh, Aaron will play those odds again. If he doesn't go over the rock, then he's going to take a focus. We could have a repeat of last turn. Um, also, you never know. Aaron might be just feeling, um, you know, might just be having a surge of whimsy and he'll uh, go to the right and want to do some ghost hunting with, you know, his little 17 point Tala. Mm -hmm. You never know what type of mood he's <laughs> No, I don't think he'll do that. He'll play safe. Now, if you were the local rebel, mm -hmm. would you find any value of dumping out Fen right now? Just consider dumping out Fen before you moved like that, or is it after you move, uh, to have a, another set of guns to dump out the back of the Lothal, dump out Zeb, and then uh, take out that Tala? Mathematically speaking to me, no. I think yeah. right now you've got five damage still. Yeah. The way Aaron chips are sp spread out, I don't think you gain anything in getting rid of the shuttle this round. I think, I think if he takes two damage this turn, he thinks about doing it next turn to preserve the damage against it. But I think right now, with five hole left, your yeah. end of round TLT is worth way more than the, the guns. Okay, so let's just say he speaking. was to dump out Zeb, and you've got two ships worth of guns on yeah. the Tala. You actually do have two ships coming around that asteroid to go after Jess now. I mean, the Phantom still got three red dice, so just there's different ways to think about it. Absolutely, he, no it, true. Oh, he does a bank. Okay, all right. So look at this again. Just check out that trajectory there, yep. right? So he's going for that extra evade die. Yeah, absolutely. He might just have it. I think he does. He takes the focus. Alive, yeah, he is, and that, that Tala is playing the odds really well. Uh, yeah, he's keeping that rock between his opponent, him and his opponent, Whenever every time. Whenever Aaron flies a Z, it's always called Barb. That, yeah, we, are, we were I mentioning. I have learned this, yes. Barb, Barb's on point today. Barb O'Malley. Irish weekend. That's right? a, Barb that, today, that's what she is, yeah. She's Barb O'Malley with the fiery red hair. <laughs> Yeah, confirm, con confirm, construct, uh, obstructed. Okay, so they ruled it unobstructed. Oh, okay. and Mark oh. was able to roll double di double hits. Okay, fifty three to seventeen. A uh, little over eleven minutes here, just a hair over. Can the ghost get in and take out Jess uh, and Ezra? I mean, she's got three life left. Who, Jess? Yeah. 
she hasn't popped in Oh, yet. that's true, yeah. Yeah, so, that's true, yeah. Theoretically, and, Mark could kill her in one turn. They're yeah. both PS3, yeah. but it would be simultaneous fire. So Aaron, Ooh. if he's going to lose Jess, he's got to get that ghost off the board. He doesn't want to have uh, Jess uh, range one of himself at all. No way. So I think Jess is going to do the hard two to ship right. I think Fen, oh, sorry, the uh, stress bug Ezra is going to go four forward if that fits beside that rock. Or maybe three forward. I'm not sure. It's hard to tell. Mm, it looks yeah, dicey. Yeah. It looks dicey. Ah, uh, dicey. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Um... <laughs> And then Lorex got to got to kind of like fill in that space as well. I don't know if he can get there in time to give his reinforced token to anybody effectively. So if you're yeah, you're right, uh, Vladimir. You're right. Uh, you've noted here that uh, very smart play by Aaron. Well deserved win. Well, it's not over yet. I do not think Mark should have forced damage into Jess. Very hard to kill with friends around. I will agree. You know, going after Jess, it's it's a pretty bold move. It is. You know, do you she, have a softer target there that you could take advantage of? Yeah, with friends, she is questionably the hardest ship to kill, especially no. with Lorik with selflessness out there. So, so I was gonna say, I, I think if I'm if I mark, I don't try to be cheeky and go for that gap between the rocks. I definitely no, do this. No, no, this is smart. Now, I'd just like to take a step back here. Remember when we were talking about, uh, you know shooting at Jess, it was really his only good option because the other option was shooting at uh, the Tala through, um, shooting at the Tala squadron while he was on the rock, which was also creating obstruction. So it was six of one, half a dozen of another. And uh, also, if I remember correctly, neither of those ships had support from Lorik because he was at range two of the well, Ghost, that's a, right? That's exactly so, it. That's what Mark was saying. He's like, it sucks. I don't want to shoot at her, but yeah, she's currently my yeah. best option. He, and he took the best you, option he had. But yeah. that's just showing you the fact that Aaron was able to present the best attack option being a ship that can reroll. Now you never know, it might pay off in the last six minutes of the game. I know we're at nine, but yep. imagine the next six, sorry, the last five to six minutes of the game, I've seen crazy stuff happen. Yep. Look how Bohan won nationals last year. Yep. The last two minutes of the game. Absolutely. So you just never know. Absolutely. A, a well-flown match against uh, that one as well. Now what's the math on that? Because I'm terrible at math. What's 28 plus 17? That's why I was an artist, because I can't do math. <laughs> No, you're like at 45. 45. Okay, so he's still going to have to get a third ship off the board. So he's got to get Ezra. So Mark's got to get 62. No. Oh. Three, sir. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I, the only numbers I know are frames. 12, yeah. 24, 6. I just did my taxes like, this week. I don't oh. want to hear anything about numbers. Anyway. Oh, I, I just got my return yesterday. Oh, but you be quiet. Oh, I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't even collected my assets to file them yet. I don't even want to know. Grown up, don't bring our grown up problems into next Yeah, no more, no more talking of that. No. Yeah. Okay, back to uh, pleasant distractions here. Yeah. Here we yeah. go. So what do we have here for Mark? Mark is uh, running around with a total of nine hull, or sorry, nine health, excuse me. And Aaron, he's running around with six and 12, 13. Nine to 13, still not a done deal. I know it's uh, 53 to 17 right now in points, but still I not a done I'm deal. I think if Aaron, I slow roll. I do the Rebel Special. I, there's no need for you to force well, Anything. look at him here. I agree. He's just, you know, he's just sauntering down the main street. Look where uh, Ezra's facing. Everybody can just take it easy. Do ones. Well, the All the way because through. He ha yeah, because yeah. he has no auto thrusters in his list. He's he's actually susceptible to the double, the double TLT fire at range three. He's not going to get the auto, so, oh, maybe he's going to know. Looks like he's going to go for it. Now, if I was Aaron, I would check for flight assist. I would. There he goes. Thank you. He's just saying it. Is he out of range? He's out of range. Oh, wow, look at that. So he can get a boost if he wants, or he can barrel roll back and out. Or I do neither. Remember, flight assist is a may. Is a may, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely, yeah. pro tip to some of the newer oh, players, less, less, less experienced mm, players, or just darn. players looking to learn a little bit more about the game. Yeah. Um, flight assist is, an act, is, is something you can check after you make your maneuver. It's not dirty even if you think it is or isn't out of arc. You're allowed to gather that information. It would behoove you to get that information um, and use it to your advantage. Aaron was able to tell where exactly he was and, and tell that, okay, I'll get that range three and I'm going to go all in on the ghost. He confirmed yep. the information he's executing. You should do that if you're trying to play at the premier level. Absolutely. Within reason Absolutely. and not in a nasty way. You want to oh, yeah. do it yeah. Yeah. when it is prevalent, when it makes sense. Well, I mean, it, I bet you it's really easy to get a reputation if you uh, if you have a nasty attitude at the table. And, yeah. You know, I this mean, is the a, age of social media. Yeah, you it's don't a pretty want to be known small as community that guy. for how global we are, but... <laughs> But Aaron has said, to get it, I'm going for it, I'm taking the points. Patrick, Patrick, you're right. I think it's a big risk here. I, I usually don't see Aaron being this aggressive, but I think he's, the, I oh, think no, he's, he's thinking of day he's three. He's got his moments. 
Yeah, I think he's thinking of day three, Sunday. He wants so. to be in that final group of Swiss. He wants and to be I, in the final. And I, and I think... There we go. Oh, hey, ooh, look at that. That's what he needed. That's what, that's what Mark needed there. He wow. He that evade. That counts as a natty, doesn't it? It's 100% it technically of does. one. <laughs> it technically does count as a natty. So let's not discount Mark's efforts here. <laughs> Mark gets an Irish. Using his EPT. <laughs> when it was Come on quite now. integral. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so we did... What was that? So he's got to go after Jess. Jess. Okay. He's got to go after Jess. And uh, here we have oh, the... Oh, no, uh, he's going to... He's going to take the shot on the bug. Yeah? Oh, and the uh, semi-domesticated Devin Monkhouse in his natural habitat has uh, joined us again here, everybody. You having any fun today at all, Devin? Wait a minute. I've been having a ton of fun. Good, good. I see Barb bit the dust. Barb bit the dust, but she did her job. She put four damage into the ghost on the opening oh, salvo with her harpoon. And keeps spreading that damage all around. That's, uh, yeah. I think he thought around. about the... I, thought he, I guess he thought about doing double TLT damage on the ghost, which I don't... I think focus on Jess and get the points. So we, uh, we addressed the question in chat about what happens tomorrow. We got another 80 players tomorrow. So we got 50 today, and uh, we got we got 80 tomorrow, and then we have uh, day two is Sunday, and we've got we do two more rounds of Swiss, and then we do a top eight cut. Okay, so it's a range two obstructed. The ghost takes that damage. Ooh. One, two, three, so sitting on one hull now? Yeah. I guess so. So yeah. we are definitely seeing the shuttle. We're definitely seeing Zeb come out. A little over four minutes left. Uh, Death Revived, Death revived 1991. Yeah. Uh, did anyone do a breakdown of out-of-towners? Uh, we don't have don't an absolute hard count, but we do have quite a few. We always get really lucky with the visitors that come to see our, our local events. Look, we got people from Victoria. We got yep. people from Vancouver. Yep. We, I think uh, we don't. I don't know if we got any Alberta representation. We got a bunch of Quebec representation. Yep. And uh, we're, we're going to do a lot of a Ontario. We've got a couple of lovely Yanks up with us as well. Look, we got... I heard uh, we had a Blue Noser from Nova Scotia. Do we? So. Oh, do we really? That's what uh, Tim was saying. Nice. Right? Yeah. Somewhere. Uh, Somewhere. We got a bunch from New Mexico came up with, uh, with Grasser and Jerry. Nice. That's so awesome. So then tomorrow, and then tomorrow, tomorrow we, got, we have a uh, load of guys who come up from the States, right? We, got, we got a handful, yeah. Guys, wow. yeah. Yeah, we a usually handful? get a pretty competitive and awesome turnout from travelers. For the next. Radical Squadron from, uh, oh. from North, upstate New York will Radical show up. Nice. They'll be tomorrow. Nice. Okay. Yeah, nice. We'll get more, more, more locals on... Uh, more locals come out on the Saturday. Yeah, I'm a little an I'm a little antsy about tomorrow. It's going to be a hell of a day. Yeah. Uh, there were some Detroit boys here today. Coming yeah, they are. Yeah, trying yeah. to trying to get revenge for uh, Motor Eric City G. rolling out. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Oops. Well, we got three minutes left in the game. Shout this out to everybody is, uh, from Michigan, Detroit. Thanks yeah. for coming up and visiting us. Excellent. So we've I got to be I now. gotta be louder, eh? If you're back, yeah. If I'm back, I for a little bit. <laughs> for a little bit. Patrick, Patrick, the two turn again. Eh? He's not going to go for it twice. No, he's not no. stressed. So, oh, the fork. Wow, he wants he wants some primaries, so primary and then end of turn TLT. It so looks like it. That. Nice. But so he is. No so matter Mark what he did, he was going to be in lower arc, right? So he's taking lower dice this turn. Uh, so well, it's time to put them out there, <laughs> right? I mean, the, the rebel's going to get PS killed, right? Like it's not it's not good. It's not going to live. That's what Aaron just says. If you're going to dice, you're not going to get the TLT at the end. You should stick the shuttle out. Mark's holding on to it. He's gambling that he's red. I don't. I don't know if that's the right choice. But now, one thing we need to check is: Does Mark know how to? Unlike Eric Z, does Mark know how to launch a shuttle? Uh, I'm not 100 percent sure. I think he has as much experience with this as Eric did when he took it to Syracuse, to which was oh, I've I've seen it once. Love you, Z. Mr. Two-time regional champion. He might know what he's doing, right? Eric? <laughs> oh, he does now. Definitely, <laughs> he sure does. What do you think? See, think Ezra's got arc? I think he might have arc. Oh, he yeah. definitely has arc. He's got, I think he's got a range one. Look at that line. Yeah. I think he's got a range one, and that's a range two tactician. So. Yep. Oh, boy. Uh, oh, boy, oh, boy. So oh that boy. is definitely putting all your eggs into a, He's going to PS kill the ghost here and deny Mark. Yep. Yeah. Points. That's yeah, definitely Ray there. Oh, does he not? Oh, my. No way. Oh, so close. It's up to Lorik, which looks like a range two. I believe... Ray for three, oh, no. kills the ghost, damages. Launch the torpedo. Oh, oh that's it. He's, is that the shake? That's it? Yep, I guess that's it. Mark's deciding to... 
Unless Aaron say, hey, you okay, know, so let's. Shuttle. I'm going to. I just want to point out we talk about we talk about like respect and uh, spirit of competition. Absolutely. Aaron just let Mark know that if he calls it when the shuttle dying and doesn't pop up the shuttle, he's going to concede the MOV. So he's just told him, make sure you shoot out the shuttle, otherwise you're giving me free 18 MOV. Yeah. And that's a 18 MOV that would have gone in Aaron's favor. Oh, but the fact that so. he's giving him that option just shows you the sportsmanship and the quality of the players at the table. You see that all over the place. Uh, rarely do you see. Uh, sorry, in my experience, rarely do you see uh, somebody just you know stay in zip lip. It's amazing how many times you see players helping each other out, even at top tables. I mean, top ten all the time. Yeah, that's yeah. what makes the community pretty great and makes this game so good. So now, mind you, there's been a couple of stream games where yeah, I've seen you know both players being tight lipped, but well, I mean, not in know, this area. If you're in finals or whatever it is, within reason, right? Yeah. Like, oh, and it's totally justified. Nobody's gonna call you out and say, hey, you know. Uh, I mean, he wouldn't have been Why wrong for keeping his him? mouth shut. Yeah. I think he just wanted to make Mark understand that yeah. if he calls it, that's a concession. Yeah. The concession is a 100-0 win for your opponent. You're right, that's Samir. A that, that's a very good point. We have to point. We have to clearly state on both sides of that perspective, it's acceptable. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. So we're down to zero seconds, and are the guys setting dials? It looks like they're setting dials. Here we go. They want one more round in here. It's a late judge, maybe. And uh, Aaron's about to yell. X-wing Not Aaron, players, uh, that Devin. That is time in the round. X-wing players, that is time in the round. Time in the round. Oh, chat's correcting me. Okay, thank you for letting me know, guys. I thought it was 100 when you conceded, but it's 100 versus whatever you've killed. Okay. Not only forget to, don't forget to mark if you're dropping. That's also good to know, which is why Aaron told him you would lose the 18 point. And there we are. Yeah, we're all done. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Samit. It's been good to be with you. Thank you very much for joining us. And as always,